There's no such thing as having a tomato garden that's free of any sort of issues. And right now, I've reached a point in the year where my issues are becoming very prevalent and obvious. And that is that I have a ton of fungal disease, not only in my tomatoes, but also I have powdery mildew on all my squash. But I want to take you in a little closer on all my tomato plants and show you how these different issues appear, what might happen to your plant. And actually I found one of my least favorite pests, a pest that I hate with everything inside of me because it's invisible, you don't really see it, and it really wrecks your tomatoes. I'll show you exactly how to determine that, how to diagnose it. And first though, we're going to be looking at these beefsteaks, which have been the most productive beefsteaks I've ever grown. And they have provided me with a lot of fruit, but at this point in the season, they're done. Let me bring you in closer on a couple different highlighting issues on this plant, in particular fungal diseases. The first major disease I wanted to show you guys up close was fusarium. At least I'm pretty sure it is fusarium. I actually see a really good example of it here. The way I first discovered that I had this issue, I'm gonna just trim these leaves off so they're not in the way, is I was actually weaving a plant, trying to push it under the string, and the stem just snapped on me. So now the stem is all cleaned up and you guys should be able to see much easier. There are actually multiple examples of it on this stem right here. Right where my finger is, you see that kind of reddish brown line? If I were to take this tomato and just bend it, snap. So right there, that's what happened to me. That's where I discovered it. If you take a look inside, it has this reddish brown color within the stem itself. That is the fungal infection, and it's stopping the nutrients and water from flowing up your stem to produce healthy fruit. So any part of the stem that has that, like even right here, will snap like so. So this is just a very annoying issue. It's also a very bad issue because now that fungal disease is fully inside this plant. Besides seeing this fusarium very obviously on the stems, the other thing I'm noticing is that the leaves are starting to die high up on the plant, even though they're not that old. They shouldn't be dying this quickly. They have a very discolored appearance to them from yellows to browns to blacks. So I think the disease has just spread throughout the entire plant. The other major fungal issue that I'm seeing here is blight. So what blight does is it causes the stem to wither, fold over, and essentially kills the plant because now nothing can get through because it's entirely folded in on itself. So these two fungal diseases at a very minimum are present on my tomatoes. And in particular, this section here is quite bad. So all these need to go. But yesterday I filmed my south side of the garden where I ripped out all my determinate tomatoes. And that's where I found that major pest that I was talking about. And it all involves checking the roots of your plants. Let's start over here with this zucchini that I just found. This is a classic five days out of the garden zucchini. It pretty much is at the maximum size that I could ever <laughs> imagine a zucchini reaching. I mean, look at this thing. This is, I don't know what it is at this point. It's no longer a summer squash. This is a absolute monster. I think at this point, it feels pretty good actually. It's possible that you could stuff this and bake it, or it could end up being a really good treat for the chickens. But let's go ahead and throw this in the basket, see if it fits. Oh, just fits just right. So now let's move on over to here where I'm gonna harvest all these determinate tomatoes and actually pull them from the ground and replace it with something else. A lot of times when people talk about determinate tomatoes, they mention that all the fruit will set at once and then you get your entire harvest at that one point. But actually, that's not entirely true. A lot of times determinate tomatoes will actually ripen over a couple weeks or even a month plus. And in this case, I've been harvesting for well over a month, I'd say at this point. So what I'm doing now is I've given up on hoping for any more production. There's pretty much no flower setting anymore. And even though there are a couple little ones over here, the plant in general just looks really bad. I'm actually also seeing my least favorite pest in the garden, something that I only started seeing last year, which is the leaf-footed bug. I'm gonna try to catch one without killing it so I can show you it up close. But these guys are a menace to tomatoes and I've been finding them only in this tomato bed, which is another reason I actually wanna get rid of this entire bed. The first one I tried to catch flew away. I actually forgot they could fly but that is the leaf-footed bug. These guys are super, super annoying. Take a look at its foot over there. It has this kind of leaf-like look to it at the bottom. And what these guys do is that they stab all your tomatoes. So let me show you a tomato that has experienced damage from them, but they're extremely frustrating because they don't actually destroy the tomato. They just walk around stabbing it, sucking the juices out, leaving all these little specks and transferring diseases across all your plants. The convenient thing is that when they have babies, all of them hatch at once and they tend to cluster together, making it really easy to eliminate. So I'm gonna go ahead and destroy this because I hate these pests and they destroy all my tomatoes. This is one of the few pests where I actually am pretty aggressive about getting rid of them. 
The presence of that leaf-footed bug is another great reason to actually clear this bed out because I am positive that there are eggs and probably babies all throughout this bed. So what I'm going to do is just start collecting all these fruit. Any of them that have damage like this that has a hole in it, probably from some sort of caterpillar, I'm going to get rid of because these are sauce tomatoes and I don't want to spend too much time having to process these. Now in most cases, even if there is a blemish, like I actually just split this tomato open, see that hole right there? If you look inside, there's no real damage except for the very exterior where that hole was actually created. So you can actually just cut around it. I know a lot of people think that's gross, but this is perfectly good food and it's definitely something you can do. A lot of times I actually recommend cutting the plant instead of pulling the roots out. But in this case, I wanted to pull the roots to make sure I don't have any root knot nematode damage because that's something that I've been experiencing in other parts of my garden. And luckily I don't see any. When you see the root knot nematode, all the roots get really swollen and chunky and big. And these look pretty healthy actually. They look really nice and white, nice elongated roots. So there is no root issue here, which is great. Here's what we got from this one bed of determinate tomatoes. All these green ones I will be turning into chutney. And actually after this video, there'll probably be a video titled something like three or four or five different ways to use tomatoes where I'll go through a couple different recipes that we like to use. Now that everything's harvested, we're going to go ahead and break this bed down. So I'm gonna pull these last couple plants and then start removing the stake and trellis system. While we're here, I figured I'd show you the chop and drop pepper bed. These are all the peppers that I recently transplanted. As you can see, they are growing really, really healthy, really well. There's a lot of flowers and actually fruit already developing. So all in all, this was a very well worth experiment. The basket is getting quite full here, but we're not even close to done harvesting. And the problem that I was alluding to is right down here. When you leave your garden for a long time, you don't get a chance to be present in the garden and the wildlife becomes much more comfortable. So right here, a probably bird, I would guess, by the way that it's been pecked in like that, found this tomato and decided to make a meal of it. Now this is maybe a good sign for me to get a bird bath because they're probably looking for water more than anything when they're eating something like this. So let's go ahead and harvest all these other tomatoes here that are even slightly ripe, just to avoid this problem from occurring in the future. Now I do have one very, very interesting tomato over here. This is called the Godzilla or Traveler's Tomato. And it's actually a very interesting tomato. All of these little bumps here are different sections of the tomato. And you could actually just take a little chunk. Let me get a little closer here. So here it is up close. It looks very funky. You could take a chunk like this one right here, break it right off, and it's actually still sealed. So this doesn't affect the rest of the tomato from going bad. You could pop this as a little snack. It's actually really good. And then the idea is that as you're walking along, you're traveling, you just break off little chunks, snack on it without having the whole tomato go bad. And it's a very interesting looking tomato, very unique. And actually I'm surprised it doesn't taste that bad either. This is the grafted tomato that I made earlier in the season. And actually this is the first fruit that I'm collecting from it. It is much further behind from the rest of the plants. And that is mostly due to the fact that I had to do the grafting process, which required healing and more time to actually just physically do the graft. So this is the first fruit. It's looking fine. It is cat faced. This is just something that could happen to any tomato. But other than that, the leaves actually look much healthier than any of the other plants. So I'm optimistic that this will continue to give me fruit throughout the end of summer into fall while the rest of my plants start to fade. So I don't know, cautiously optimistic for now, not blown away by anything. I do see some stink bugs here, which I'm squishing. But other than that, first fruit from the grafted tomato and we'll see where it ends up at the end of the season. So it seems like pest season has just come full swing here for me. This is another one that I've just seen recently. I believe it's some sort of stink bug. And any stink bug is also similar to leaf-footed bug where they just stab your tomatoes and transfer disease. So another pest that you don't want in your garden. We've got a couple more sauce tomatoes over here, and then we can move on to the other side of the garden. Where there's actually more tomatoes to harvest. So here's the haul so far. All right, guys, this is a sad moment here. It turns out, as I was mentioning earlier, I've been pulling the roots to check for root.nematode, and here it is. This is what I'm talking about. See how there's these gals and little bumps on the roots? Compared to the other root system, this is a very unhealthy root system. This is full of root knot nematodes. They stab the roots and they cause these gals to form, which actually suffocate the plant because the water can now no longer transport up the plant. And it explains why this tomato has only gone this big. I should have known earlier. It's only, I don't know, three or four feet at the most. 
and it's been in the ground for quite a few months. So basically what this means is that I have to pull all the tomatoes and I have to fill that entire bed with marigolds, specifically French marigolds, which are good for combating root knot nematode. And it also means that I probably shouldn't plant tomatoes there next year, which is unfortunate because it's one of my favorite places to put them. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove all these tomatoes now. I don't want to, I might leave that back wall for a little bit longer just to get a couple more sauce tomatoes. But on this side, everything's gonna go, including the sun gold, which I am sad about. All right, so now that we know that that had root knot nematode, let's go ahead and pull these other ones and see if we have the same problem. This might actually kill the rest of the harvest from the other side of the garden, because this is just a problem I can't ignore. Here's the total plant with its messed up roots, and actually it's just now setting its first fruit. I should have noticed this problem earlier and gotten rid of this tomato, and this is actually one of the few starts I bought from the nursery, and maybe it's a sign for me to never buy from the nursery again, because I don't see how else this root knot nematode problem can get into my soil from the first place if it didn't come from an external source. Huge bummer. So now let's check the last tomato here, which is the sun gold. I'm almost certain that it just has to have root knot nematode if the other two did, but let's go ahead and check. There's only one way to know. And sad, because this is my favorite snacking tomato for sure. And yep, sure does. So this is obviously a huge bummer and I'm definitely sad about it, but I'm happy that I was able to capture this for you guys so you could see what this root knot nematode damage looks like and how to identify it. And now basically here's the plan moving forward for the rest of this year. That bed is going to be planted with a lot of marigolds and brassicas. Both of those together should help fumigate the soil. Once the marigolds have fully flowered, they'll actually chop and drop and even till it into the soil to help prevent and destroy some of these nematodes. I won't be planting any tomatoes in there for sure for at least a full year. So next year, zero tomatoes are going in that bed. I'm going to find somewhere else to grow them. Luckily the bed in front of me here with the determinants didn't have that problem, but that's it. The other thing you could try to do is use beneficial nematodes, which I have applied in the past, but honestly it's one of those things where you don't really know if it's working. And I guess in this case it didn't work. So what I'm going to do now is, I don't know, assess that last tomato plant there. I didn't really want to get rid of it yet, but I think that's it for this one, guys. I got some uh, sad rumination to do here, thinking about the sun golds that I will no longer be able to harvest from this bed. And moving forward, it's a good idea to practice crop rotation so you don't run into the same problem that I have here. I've been growing tomatoes in that bed for three years in a row now, and this is the price I paid for it.